First of all, let me say that I'm deeply honored to have the opportunity to speak today in memory of Chris Roberts, and I really didn't expect to have to do this. When I saw Johnny Kay's post on social media, it made me sad. But then as I thought about it, I began to smile because it made me flash back to all of the good times at KFXM in remembrance of Chris Roberts. Chris worked during the day, I worked nights, so I didn't see him that often, but when I did see him, he always had this funny little comment or a funny story to tell, and he did it with this little grin on his face, which made me laugh. And I thought, you know, I really like this guy. And of course, Chris went on to accomplish so many things, including UCLA sports, where he touched the lives of listeners and fans for more than 50 years. And even though Chris and I didn't see each other that often over those 50 years, I'll always remember the professional attitude and warmth that he brought to KFXM, both on the air and off the air. He will be deeply missed by many, but I'm sure his legacy will live on in the memories and stories that we share about him. Rest in peace, Chris, brother. Chris Roberts was one of the nicest guys in the sportscasting business. He was also a very fine sports announcer. I first met Chris when he was doing Cal State Long Beach basketball. He did that for 10 years. At the same time, I was announcing UNLV basketball. So we saw each other at least twice a year during the basketball season. Chris was always knowledgeable. He was accurate. He had a very good style of announcing. He was easy to listen to. And the thing about him was you knew when you tuned Chris in that you were getting the report as it should be. And he was very, very good with his homework. He was just a fine announcer. So we're all going to miss Chris Roberts, but 23 years as the UCLA football and basketball announcer and a tremendous career. God bless him. I wish we were uh, talking uh, under better circumstances. We're all gathered here to uh, talk about Chris Roberts, who uh, passed a couple of days ago. Um, I knew he was uh, he was ill. I was hoping he would get better, but uh, that wasn't to be. It's it's always tough losing friends, let alone friends that I've befriended many years ago and have known for such a long time. Uh, Chris is one of my oldest friends. I met him in 1971. Uh, I was on the uh, competing radio station in San Bernardino and uh, at uh, K-Man, and uh, he was at KFXM. And uh, so everybody over at KFXM, they were the, they were the enemy. Uh, so we didn't have anything to do with them. Uh, but when I went across the street and started working at KFXM, hey, there were these great guys that uh, loved radio like I did. And uh, we were all of a sudden in the same family. Chris was very welcoming. John, Johnny K, um, he followed me at six o'clock every uh, evening. And uh, I followed Chris at two o'clock every afternoon. And all of a sudden, I'm I'm on a, the opposing team. And uh, we all got along like immediately. And it was just a great time. It was fun. It was really fun. Uh, in fact, Chris told me, more than a few times that uh, of all the years he'd been in broadcasting that uh, the years at KFXM uh, were some of the happiest times of his radio career and that uh, we did we had a really a really good time uh Chris was uh he was so unassuming I recently found out that he authored uh, co-authored two books about the UCLA Bruins I never knew that uh that he won four uh, Golden Mike Awards uh, for Sportscaster of the Year. I never knew that. Chris was just a great guy. I I, I was uh, very blessed to have known him uh, for the uh, the decades that that I did. Uh, we w went through a lot of fun times together at KFXM. I'll never forget the. Uh, rodeo at the orange show grounds when a monkey was pulling my pants off 
extent, Chris was right there laughing along with the crowd. <laughs> so yeah, these it's uh, it was I was uh, very shocked and saddened to hear of Chris's passing. It's tough, tough losing old friends like that. And uh, I just can't say enough uh, about Chris. He was just a great guy. Chris and I go back a long ways. We started together at KFXM in San Bernardino in the late 60s. Went to Los Angeles when we were just 22 years old and worked at several radio stations there. Chris helped me get into Los Angeles, for which I am forever grateful. And to repay him, I brought him on board when I was program director of Coast 103 Radio and KFI in Los Angeles. We uh, had him do a sports report every morning called Athletic Briefs, and he loved that, <laughs> that name. Chris just loved sports, and he loved being a sports broadcaster. One time he wanted to leave his legacy behind, and he asked me if I would photograph him at different sites doing basketball, football, and baseball. And so we went out, he wanted to leave this behind so that his own kids could tell their children, his grandkids, this is what grandpa used to do and have examples of what he did. And I'd like to share some of those with you right now. First up, basketball. This building right behind me, Polly Pavilion, has been a great place for UCLA to play basketball this year. They've won 14 of the first 15 games to date. Now they head to Tucson to take on the University of Arizona that have won 35 in a row in their building. Hi everybody, this is Chris Roberts. Join us now as we head to Tucson and let's see what happens. Missed shot by Kevon Looney on UCLA and the rebound, Hollis Jefferson for Arizona. Just the beginning of the game. Jefferson loses the ball. Hamilton's got it for UCLA to Bryce Alford inside Powell. Finishes with a slam dunk, 2-0 UCLA. T.J. McConnell brings it into the front court, works it on the wing to Hollis Jefferson, back to McConnell. McConnell out in front, throws the alley-oop down low. Tarzuski loses it. Bruins have it. Bryce Alford, the point guard, leads the team in threes, feeds it to Powell, gets it back. 22-footer, good! So the Bruins lead 5-0. Chris played football in high school. And he loved announcing the game when he became a professional broadcaster. Here's some examples of him doing football. Ten wins in one year. That is huge for any football team. UCLA's got a chance to do it two years in a row under head coach Jim Mora. They take on Kansas State at San Antonio's Alamo Bowl. Now, would they have loved to have played here at the Rose Bowl? Absolutely in the playoffs. Then go on to Arlington National Championship. Didn't work out that way. Hi, everybody. This is Chris Roberts. Let's find out who wins number 10. Cats, Bruins, Alamo Bowl. Brett Hundley, first and goal. 10-yard line. Bruins driving, would love to score. He's going to keep it himself after the snap. Turns left into the end zone. Touchdown, UCLA. Just seconds left in the half. Hundley, the QB, puts a man in motion. Gets the snap, wants to throw. Devin Lucian, wide open. Touchdown back of the end zone. And UCLA leads it 30 to 6 before the extra point. What a start for UCLA in the first half. What a baseball fanatic Chris was. He loved going to the games, especially when it was hot and he could drink a little beer. <laughs> he uh, he uh, wanted to uh, include a segment where he called a baseball game, so here we go. Everybody loves baseball this time of the year. Best of five game series, the three wins come quick, so do the losses. Ask the Nationals, they trail the Giants 2-0. San Francisco would love to play St. Louis, end of the week. Hi everybody, Chris Roberts here. Let's go right to the action. Madison Bumgarner with a one-two count on Wilson Ramos. Now if Ramos tries to bunt and fouls it off, that's a strikeout. Here's the pitch. He is going to bunt up along the first baseline. Bumgarner got it and threw it away up along that left field line. That means Desmond's going to score. Ishikawa gets it. By the time he gets it back to Crawford in the infield, there's another runner across home plate. Bryce Harper makes it 2 nothing. Washington in front of San Francisco. Harper 
at the plate with a 1 1 count. Ishii, he's the pitcher. The right hander deals. There's a long fly ball to right center field. This one is gone. Almost into McCovey Cove. And that's it. Bryce Harper, his second home run of the series. It is now 4 0. Washington in front of San Francisco. And they know they've got to play good ball. There are so many funny stories I could tell about Chris and I being bad boys on the radio. But uh, one in particular was uh, it was a hot Sunday afternoon, and Chris was on the air at Q102 Radio. He had been to a ball game where he consumed some alcohol, as he was known to do. Anyhow, he's on the air, and we played these long album cuts at Q102 that could go on for five to eight minutes. And the board we worked at had a long surface in front, so a lot of us would just rest our heads when we retired while we were on the air. Well, Chris, <laughs> he uh, had fallen asleep on the air on a Sunday afternoon, and the records we used back in the day, vinyl records, they had put dots on the records, these little sticker dots, so you couldn't play certain cuts. You could only play the cuts that were approved for air. The needle on the phonograph had gotten stuck against the cut and it kept re, 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 repeating a phrase. And Chris didn't wake up. All of the request lines are lit because people are wondering what's going on at the radio station. And the hotline is ringing, which means management is calling. Well, it just so happened to be that Q102 was around the corner from the Glendale Police Department. <laughs> and suddenly he hears thud 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 and he wakes up and he looks up and he sees the police are breaking through the outer door and they get in and now he sees they're about to come through the control room door and he didn't know what to do but he thought fast at the last second he went and he fell on the floor the police came in thought he had passed out on the air got him up asked if he needed an ambulance <laughs> and that's how he saved his job one thing I can always say about Chris is that he was my pal, and he loved using that term. There are only two people in my whole lifetime who have called me pal, and Chris was the first, and I'll always remember that. I'll forever be grateful to Chris for his friendship and his guidance, and whether he knows it or not, he set my feet on a path toward becoming a program director because when we were in San Bernardino as kids, I'd want to know why Los Angeles radio did certain things in certain ways, and he could figure it out. He would explain it to me, and that got my mind working as a program director. And then in retirement for both of us, we would uh, get together for lunch or dinner. Our favorite place was Marie Callender's, and we'd have some pie and talk about how things had changed, but more about how life works and what it was like to be living in our twilight years. I'm only sorry that he passed before me. We're only six weeks apart in age, but I love you to death, Chris. I always will.